Welcome back to Ricky Does It, where today I'll be making Chucky out of construction paper. As always, I like to keep these guys in proportion, so if Pennywise is our adult figure and Eleven here is our youth figure, I'd want Chucky to be a little smaller than that. Fortunately, I've already made a possessed doll, so I think Veronica Hansmuch will be the perfect template. And if you'd like to see how I made her, you can click this card or find a link in the description. Now this little red bit is just the collar of this shirt. And the rest I'm just going to cut out of gray and glue the colored stripes on. I'm also doing the thing where I fold in half and cut so he's nice and symmetrical. As a habitual recycler, I do get a thrill out of using these old scraps from other projects. Now I know his overalls have these butch little baseball, cowboy, etc. decals, but I ain't got time for all that mess. I think I want his arms angled out more, just to make him a bit more menacing. Now the cuffs of his pants, I'm going to make the same pattern as his shirt. So when I took a tally a few months back, Chucky was a clear winner for top requested video. I gotta admit, this surprised me a bit, but now that I'm making him, I gotta say this is the most fun I've had filming a video in a while. So if you're enjoying this video as much as I'm enjoying making it, why not give it a thumbs up and share it with someone you love? And don't forget to subscribe for all future videos, and who knows, maybe one of them will be something you've suggested. Now his hair, and it's quite possible this is my favorite color of paper I have. And these buttons, and I really do need to check if they make smaller hole punches, just cause that would save me a lot of time and energy. Now his good guys patch. I'm just going to use a red pen, which shows up surprisingly well in this dark blue. Now if you haven't seen my How to Make Pennywise video, you can click this card to check it out or find a link in the description. So let's outline that face. And most of his scars I'm going to draw on, but let's get that one eye socket out of red. And now we color. As always, just using a darker version of each color for shading. Then hitting everything up with white for some highlights. Now we ink. And I'm going to be honest here, I hate the way this face is turning out. But for some reason, I keep going with it telling myself not to be such a perfectionist, and that it still looks pretty cool. And yeah, the eyes and scars totally work, but overall, that's just not Chucky. So I ended up sleeping on it, and realized there's a fine line between obsessing over every little imperfection, and knowing that you can do better, and choosing to honor that. So I decided to just redo the entire head. So first bit of luck, I think we could just reuse the back of his hair. And turns out, I can recycle these eyes, too. Yeah, I kind of love rebuilding him like this. Reminds me of the opening of Child's Play 2 where they're scraping off all that burnt skin and putting him back together. Now that's our Chucky. And seeing these two together really makes me think I need to make Tiffany. So look forward to that in the next three to five years. So here he is with all the other horror movie monsters I've made so far. Be sure to check out my playlist where I show you how to make them all. So if there's anyone else you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching. So welcome back to Ricky Does It, where today I'll be making Pennywise out of construction paper. So I'm just going to jump right in. 
And the funny thing here is that the characters I do already have kind of big heads for their bodies. So if I want to keep Pennywise proportional, I'm going to have to give him one big melon. Now this here is my second attempt at making his yellow jumpsuit. But if I get Loki out here, these don't really work. Yeah, they're puffy pants, but not the big balloony it clown pants I want. So I'm just going to start with a fresh piece of paper. Lay down those MC Hammer pants for reference and just really exaggerate those proportions. And I'll just knock these ruffles out later. And yeah, those are much better clown pants. So there's part of his neck ruffle. And I'm going to use this gorgeous purple for another layer. And I'm also going to use it for his vest. I know it's kind of black, but it's also kind of sparkly, so I think this will give a good effect. And even though it's such a little accent, I'm going to get a pink trim on that vest. And one more layer of ruffles. So let me glue all these ruffles together. And get that melon on there. Now this hair seems like it might be a bit of a challenge since I don't want it to just look like two red puffs. So let's see what these baby scissors and some patience can do. And needless to say, I'm making the Tim Curry Pennywise from the 1990 miniseries. I am super excited for the new movie, which as of this recording is coming out later this week. But I'm not sure how exciting that Pennywise would be to make, since he's kind of all one color. But there are some interesting shapes, so if you'd like to see me make the 2017 version, let me know in the comments. So let's get that screaming wig glued on. <laughs> yes! Sorry for the shaking, but that looks cool. Unfortunately, I've been taking a closer look at some production stills, and it's pretty obvious that there's some blue in these ruffles. So I'm just going to do my best to take this apart without ruining the hair I was just so jazzed about. So I was real careful to trace the purple layer so the blue would fit. But honestly, I could have just cut random strips, then trimmed them to fit. Now I'm going to redo that top layer. Trim those stripes down. And get it all back together. And yeah, that looks way better. So let's work on those arms. I'm just going to cut them out of purple first. And for some reason, I decided to stop and make the line down his outfit and orange pom-poms. So here's me doing that. And it really is interesting to see how many different colors there are in this one costume. So let's get back to those arms. And this time I think it will actually help to outline first, then cut from the same shape to get these stripes. I mentioned earlier that this version of it came out in 1990. Well in the book, it says that Pennywise comes back about every 27 years to terrorize the people of Derry, Maine. So I think it's pretty cool that it's now 27 years since the miniseries came out, and we're getting a new movie. And now his cuffs are this more royal blue. So that's what? The seventh color we've used so far? That's clowns for you. And here's a quick montage of me struggling to get these hands right. And in the end, I decided to just make one of them a fist so he could be holding a balloon. So now his feet, which I was kind of surprised to find were just normal sized shoes. And we can't forget those ruffles. And I looked at a lot of images, even Halloween costumes and dolls, and I'm still not sure what color these stripes are. So I'll just make them purple and blue and call it a day. And okay, I tried to make the shoes a little more clowny, but they really do look better just as simple black shoes. So for the string on his balloon, I'm going to start with this thin cardboard I just happen to have lying around. Now for that iconic red balloon, which I think he's only actually holding once in the original miniseries. And I'm going to put a second layer of cardboard on that string. Put a little patch on the back for extra support. And finish it off with a layer of white. Yeah, that floats real nice. So let's get to drawing. I'll start with some folds on his baggy pants. And some other details. Now let's get that face laid out. 
Now I know I could easily color all these elements in, but that's not really the spirit of what I do here. So let's get that nose cut out. And some lips. And some nice yellow teeth. Now let's get to coloring. And here's where I'm going to get that glittering effect on his vest. And yeah, I think that totally works. And I'll just be back and forth, doing what I need to do to get him done. Now back to that face. Get a little shading in there. And I'm just going to color in his eyes. And now we ink. Always remember, eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Now one last touch of blue on his eyes, some red on his lips, a shine on that nose, and there he is, our Pennywise. I want to make a quick shout out to my friend Keith, who not only said he'd love to see more horror characters, but was also inspired to make his own Torgo from Manos, The Hand of Fate. Love it. And here's Pennywise with all the other horror related characters I've done so far. So if there's anyone else you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments, and yeah, thanks for watching. So welcome back to Ricky Does It, where today I'll be making Stripe out of construction paper. For this, I'll need a pencil, a pen, some scissors, a glue stick, some crayons, and of course, construction paper. Now I have this beautiful dark green, and as you can see, it's a bit darker than the standard green, and that'll be perfect for his skin. Now I was debating if I wanted to use this darker amber or lighter yellow, so I double checked online and discovered his stripes are actually more of this beige color. Who knew? So that's what I'll be using to make our stripe. Now you may remember in the last video, I was having a little trouble with proportion. So this time, I want to make sure Stripe is just about twice the size of Gizmo, which should bring him to about Spider-Man's shoulders and Eleven's ears. But let's swap them out with our blanks. And this time, I want to be careful about keeping the height right. So let's use Gizmo here for a little reference. Now Stripe has a lot of little bumps and spikes and, well, stripes going on. So if I want to maintain what little sanity I have left in this world, I'm going to have to really simplify things. But I'm hoping that in the end, I'll still be able to capture the core essence of what makes Stripe Stripe. So let's get this body. And I think I'm going to just get the torso and legs out in one chunk. And I gotta say, this more than any other project is going to depend on my drawing skills, because Stripe really has some unique forms. So let's get those arms knocked out. So let's get them glued together. And I think these proportions are working out quite nicely. Okay, I'm gonna have to get this head off in order to get this beige down. And let's get those ears. I need to shape these up a bit better. <laughs> and that's what I call a nice start. Now there's some shots where you can see a weird little tail between his legs, but I don't think that really adds anything to the overall form, so we'll just leave it out. So now let's get the rows of spikes on his brow. I'm actually just going to cut these out as single strips, then draw the spikes pointing outward when I get to that step. Let me draw his nose real quick for a point of reference. And I think these are going to need to be a bit thinner. So let's get those eyes.
And now we tackle the stripes. And as you can see, I'm just cutting strips a bit bigger than I need so they're easier to handle and gluing them down as I go. And now I'm just going to trim them all up. Oops, lost one, but that's easily remedied. Now let's get some scraps out for his mouth. And these teeth are going to be really delicate business. But again, nothing these baby scissors and a little patience can't handle. And don't forget the tweezers. <laughs> All the better to eat you with, my dear. And since I got the yellow out, I'll just make his eyes out of that. So I guess it's time to draw. And here's those spikes like I said before. And now it's time to color. So today, I'll be using a few crayons just like in all my other projects, but I'll also be using some colored pencil. And that's just because we have a lot of little details that need more precise attention. So I just realized, I forgot the stripes on his ears. So let's knock that out real quick. And oh yeah, his mohawk. Now that's stripe. So back to coloring. Oh, we lost another one. Now he's got these kind of plates on his legs, but they're also kind of stripes too. They're not as bright as the ones on his arms, so I figure I'll just color them in. And that totally works. Now all his beige parts are also outlined in red. In some images it's darker than others, but I'm just going to try and keep it nice and subtle. And now the white to just give those little highlights that make everything pop. And now we ink. I decided to pull out my Faber-Castell artist pens, just again for these little details. And I'll be going back and forth between that and my rolling ball. And I think I will line up these teeth. Lost another stripe. And this is actually a different red, but I think I like it better. So let me hit up the rest of these. And there he is, our stripe. And here he is with Gizmo, and they look great together. And just for reference of size, here again is Spider-Man and Eleven. And what the heck, let's just throw a little Doctor Strange in there. Actually, yay, it's picture time. So yeah, I can't emphasize enough how much fun I've had making all these guys. Now my premiere subscription is about to expire, so this is going to be the last video of the year. But I will be back in 2017, so make sure and let me know in the comments who else you'd like to see me make. So yeah, I want to say Happy New Year and a very heartfelt thanks for watching. Welcome back to Ricky Does It, where today I'll be making Jason out of construction paper. Now his mask is just going to be a basic oval shape. But I actually want it to be a bit bigger than usual, so I got my creation out here since he's our tallest friend so far. Now I don't usually fold heads in half to avoid a crease, but I feel with a mask like this, symmetry is key. Now his shirt. And I gotta tell you, I had no idea how Jason was dressed. For some reason, I pictured a blue jumpsuit even though I know that's Michael Myers. All I could think is that his mask is so striking that it's all you see coming at you which I think is kind of cool and underlines just how iconic it is. Let's trim that up just a little bit. Now his collar. And his hands, which I'm not going to do two at a time because I want one of them holding a machete. Jason here is one of my four top requested videos that I really want to get out before the end of the year. So if you're enjoying this video, why not give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who's awesome. And don't forget to subscribe for all future videos, and who knows, maybe one of them will be something you've suggested. And just like my creation, this video is going by real quick. 
But if you'd like to see how I made a Frankenstein, you can click this card or find a link in the description. So let's get those eye holes cut out of black. And his markings out of red. <laughs> let's try that again. Now his machete. So just a few more touches. Now if you haven't seen my How to Make Chucky video, you can click this card to check it out or find a link in the description. Alright, let's color. And since this green is so dark, I'm just going to shade it with black. So let's figure out those mask holes. And I'm just going to ink them up and do some shading while I'm at it. Now we ink. And this micron is just not laying down on top of the crayon like I'd want. So I switch up to a graphic one which has more of a marker tip. So it does a great job here. I just got to make sure and use a lighter hand so the lines don't end up too thick. Now just a little white for highlights. And there he is, our Jason. And here he is with all the other horror movie monsters I've made so far. Be sure and check out my playlist where I show you how to make them all. So if there's anyone else you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments, and yeah, Happy Halloween! Welcome back to Ricky Does It, where today I'll be making Predator out of construction paper. So I think I'm going to just get most of his body out in one piece. and his arms. Now this is the first time I'm using an X-Acto knife in one of my videos, and I just want to say, be careful. And if you're one of my younger viewers, make sure to ask an adult for permission and supervision. As for me, I called my mom and she said it was okay. Now his helmet. And I should say, this is going to be the Jungle Hunter Predator from the original 1987 movie. Now there's a lot of detail on this figure, so instead of announcing every little thing I'm doing, I'm just going to let the music play and do the thing I do. So enjoy! Now this gauntlet blade, I'm going to reinforce with some cardstock paper, just because it's long and thin and I don't want it just flopping around. Now his dreads.
and his little kind of shoulder robot camera thing. Let me get a skin pattern down. And outline everything in pencil first. Add some shading. And now we ink. Can't forget his full body fishnet stocking. All right, and Ida. Now just a few more accessories. And there he is, our predator. And here he is with just a bunch of random bad guys. Be sure and check out my playlist where I show you how to make them all. So if there's anyone else you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching. Click here to watch the playlist I just mentioned. Click down here for my latest video and what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. And be sure to subscribe for all future videos. See you soon.